What's going on guys? My name is Brian, also known as That Journaling Guy, and today I have a pretty special video for you guys. It is really long, so I would sit back, relax, grab some snacks, and we're here to talk about the DC Pen Show for 2023. I wanna talk about things like my experience and some new lessons that I've learned going for the second time. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the highlights of my show and then towards the end we'll go over the haul and the things that I got. So I hope you guys enjoy it and I'm really excited to get going. Let's go. We're going to Washington <laughs> for the pen show and we're heading out and it's a four hour drive so we won't get there till He's 12. Lying. It's three hours and 53 minutes. It's a four hour drive because <laughs> we're getting stopping at Duncan and um it's gonna be a long morning and I'm gonna to try to stay there for most of the day and hang out with people and talk to people and do things. But, that's another four hours back. So I'm not looking forward to it. But I'm looking forward to the show. This is our first pen show ever. So um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see you there. Or if I stop on the way there and see how bad it is. Many unbearable hours later. We made it. Okay. So, it's only 12.14, so that means we have the rest of the day for some pen, pen activities. So let's go, let's see what's inside. So the first place we went to was the Alexandria Room, which is where we needed to go to pick up all our pen show goodies, and we decided to walk around to all the stalls here first. This is actually the first time I've ever been to this room because the year I came, I don't think it was open, and if it was, I didn't check it out, unfortunately. So the first company we're gonna talk about and the first company I stopped at is actually Headbone Co. And I'll place their Instagram right here in the corner, but I absolutely loved their machine pens. They had these beautiful anodized colors with some show exclusives. And it was like a daughter father team that were running the stand and it was really, really cool pens. I, I really enjoyed how they were displayed and how interactive everything felt. Our next stop is going to be Galen Leather. So they, they always have these beautiful handcrafted leather goods that literally make your jaw drop, but they've become incredibly popular among the stationary community in the past few years, and I can see why. The writer's box you saw at the beginning of this clip is something I've wanted for the past like five years, and I could never really justify getting it, but then now that I'm traveling with my urban sketching, it's absolutely something I wanna look into. And they were actually a sponsor of the DC show, so they gave these beautiful string bags with a gorgeous leather pen holder. And I really want to start getting a little more Galen leather stuff, but, and I didn't know that they even had fountain pens. Since when do they sell fountain pens? Am I that out of the loop? Jeez. Next here we have Lincoln's Leathers where they had these beautiful like pen clips. That was the first thing that caught my attention. And I thought it was probably one of the more unique fountain pens that I found at the show. But the coolest part was their stacked leather pens. All of their pens are made with stacked leather that's turned on a lathe and then covered in epoxy. And I thought it was so cool and absolutely a one of a kind kind of pen. Go check them out. I'm here to interrupt your daily entertainment of fountain pen vlog stuff to talk about one of the things that changed from my first show to my second show. And the first thing that I felt really was different was there was just a refined sense of prioritization. Um, I think now that I have a little bit more experience in the fountain pen world and with fountain pens in general, I kind of was able to prioritize certain shops, certain people, and I wasn't as lost as I was during the first show. I think I realized I had a lot of growth in, in my fountain pen journey from when I first came to now. You know, I was able to recognize pens, I was able to recognize people a lot easier, and I was able to look through the noise, like the super hyper-manufactured pens, to see the really nice handmade art pieces that you kind of go to, to these fountain pen shows to see. And I think that was just a really big difference from the first time to the second time that I went. So let's continue with the vlog. So I did end up going on a Friday, which is one of the trader days because the show's normally open Saturday and Sunday. So it's not too, too packed, but there was a good amount of people for these days. From the Alexandria room, we decided to head to the smaller ballroom where there were more vendors. And these are the things I saw there. Our first stop was the Canalea Pet Company stand, which I'm always drawn to because this table 
is simply so like beautifully set up and the way they they display their pens it always draws my attention but what's beautiful about these pens is that they're, they're each inspired by a hawaiian location and it should be noted that if you buy a pen from them for this month of august 2023 a portion of the sale goes to the relief effort in maui right now there's a lot of meaning behind each of their designs and they all feel really well thought out I genuinely think these are beautiful pens. The next company and where I got my first pen of the show was the Keras Pen Co. And I know they might have been around for a while, but this is the first time that I've seen them at the DC Pen Show. It's only my second show, mind you. But they were really, really nice. Other than buying my first pen here for the show, and I'll show you why during the haul, they were really nice. We ended up talking about cameras for like 30 minutes and how bad it is to shoot in Arizona because things overheat. Overall, the guys here were really cool to talk to, and I'm really happy I got one of their pens. Now moving right across the room, we go to Shown Designs table. So Shown Design pens were popular when I first started getting into fountain pens and are only getting more popular with the release of their Monarch nib. It's all made in-house, which makes it one of the few fountain pen companies out there that are innovating in the space. Ian Schoen is the founder of the company and one of the engineers and designers of his products. And I'd love to one day own the Monarch nib, but it's a tiny bit out of my price range right now. And his table was one of my favorite because of how much he interacted with his customers. In the few minutes that I spent at his table, three people came up to him asking about his nibs and how they worked. And he spoke to people as long as they wanted to and just overall was super thoughtful in how he was with everybody. It was a really cool table, really cool company, and a really cool founder. Definitely recommend. And hopefully I get one of their pens soon. Now, one of the biggest highlights of the entire show was Pierre from the Desiderata Pen Company. And I mean, he has very beautiful pens and, you know, you see those pink pens and they're gorgeous, but he has to be a contender for one of the most interesting men in the world. OK, we ended up speaking to Pierre for a good 30 minutes about how he started making pens and the origins of his company. But other than his absolutely beautiful pens, the one thing that I absolutely loved were his business cards. OK, everything is done by him and only him, and he's not afraid to show it. The business cards are hilarious and overall he was so fun to talk to very welcoming an amazing overall like owner in general i can't wait to keep interacting with him honestly a pen company i'm gonna i'm gonna put up a little picture so you guys can see how amazing this business card is okay because this is great and he has some phenomenal pens right now and i'm going to show you guys what i've seen right now he has some ones that are made out of wood an ebonite one they're like acrylic molds they're phenomenal pens and they look really dope he's even got a bookmark <laughs> let's see the bookmark i already sold out my cups <laughs> Lethal Weapon. Lethal Weapon? The movie, Lethal Weapon. Now we'll be heading over to John Tello's pen company, Hello Tello Studio. So they're beautiful handmade pens, which he calls functional pieces of art. And I couldn't agree more because instantly the pen that caught my attention was the Gloria pen. This beautiful resin fountain pen that has a gorgeous red nib caught my eye from a mile away. And the story behind the pen is even more amazing. And I highly suggest checking it out. John was also awesome to talk to, super charismatic guy, and overall seemed like a lot of fun to be around. So, Sailor has a program where you can create your own pen, okay? And you're gonna build all the individual parts yourself. It's the first time they're doing this program, so they're testing it out, and next year they might have a different program. But you get some, you get your own custom pen, essentially, like your own specs, your own stuff. Everything from the barrel to the nib to the converter color, and you get these crazy colors. And I'm really, it's really cool. So we're, we're going to do it. We're doing it. I don't care. Because you can do everything from the barrels to the clips, nibs, which you already know we're doing like a pink design. There was a rainbow one, and then there was a... Okay, maybe they pick one I thought. I would think. This is right, really cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so basically, what it comes down to is you pick yeah your, your body, the cap, that's your your uh, top finial, your bottom finial. You got to pick one of the clip and the band, mm -hmm. and then uh, these are basically the same ones as gold trim. One is silver trim. So. Okay. And that is it. Once you and then well you pick converter as well, and then once you pick that together, let me know and I'll have her. We'll just sing, pull it all together. Like, imagine as an adult going to a Build-A-Wear workshop, but instead it's build your own fountain pen, and I just thought it was such a cool 
like thing to do at a fountain pen show i really like the idea it's so much fun you can bring people together and you get like a custom show pen for a really affordable price like come on that's so dope i think this was the absolute highlight of my show why i take so long but yeah all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rebuild it over here so we start with fresh parts and you tell me i need to make sure it's it's the correct way and let's see that section So is there like a 15 minute time limit usually? Yep, yep. So well, we're testing it out, right? Seeing like, is 15 minutes enough? Is it not enough? Like, you know, we're, we're kind of living and learning through it all as well. And uh, until you kind of get there and you, people try, try things out, you kind of don't know, right? And mm -hmm. so, uh, what am I missing? I'm missing top one is that. So does that look right to you? Let's see. Hey, sorry. Yeah. Let me come over here. Okay. Which one is it? Yep. Make it help putting that back. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, and she'll get building that thing and special process. And she actually flew out from Japan and sailor. So this is essentially kind of like a one of a kind kind of pen. <laughs> it's really cool. I'm really. <laughs> All right. That's cool. That's a cool thing. Yeah. So we're so, testing it out. Any idea what next year's program might be? No, we're going to live and learn, but this, yeah, this is the only time we'll do it this year, so in North America. Wow. I'm very excited. Thank you. Look at it. Look, look at it. It's, it's one of a kind, Chief. All right? For 75 bucks. It's the Sailor Compass, essentially. And it's the first time they're doing this program, and it's a live event kind of pilot program. You're going to be able to do it at only like pen shows and maybe like retailers but the first time they're doing it look how sick this is all right i'll show you guys like an overhead and, and I'll, I'll explain the process but they flew somebody out from japan to assemble it she takes like four minutes and it is it's sick all right it's cool look at this i i can't i'm shaking why am i shaking i don't even know why i'm shaking <laughs> it's awesome we're coming back next year this is the only reason we're gonna come back all right sailor like they're doing it and we're back. Now, the second thing that has definitely improved during this show, and I'm sure the more you do it, the better it's going to get, is definitely the navigational skills. I wasn't like a lost little puppy trying to figure out where to go. I know that for the DC show, there's usually two to three rooms, and I know where to find them, and I know where to find certain companies. Usually, usually, some things can change, but I felt a lot better. Okay, I felt more familiar with the show. I felt more familiar with the venue in general, like finding booths and optimizing my routes of going all the way around. Since I did do a few rounds, I know the best way to go for me and for what I was looking for and where to record. I just felt a lot more comfortable. So there was definitely an aspect of like time management. Like there was just significantly better time management and the way I spent my time during the second time of me going to the show than there was during the first. And I think that that's definitely something that should be talked about. I just wanted to let you know. Let's go on, let's move on. Listen, so the trick to the pen show is you gotta step out and take a break, okay? Because if not, the pens just start looking like pens. And what are we doing? Listen, the first round, the first time going around, it took us almost two and a half hours. A quick reminder, and I can't stress this enough, make sure you take a break, bring some lunch, bring some snacks, walk away from the show. Make sure that you're not there the entire time. It can mess you up mentally. You get kind of tired, you get kind of bored. The pens kind of mix together. This is your reminder, take a break. And of course, I you know your boy had to get some five guys. <laughs> so after some lunch and a quick little break, we were off to the main ballroom. And I wanted to walk you around the main ballroom to really give you an idea of the scope of the show, how big it really is compared to other smaller shows. Like I remember going to the Baltimore and like Philly show, significantly smaller than this. There's so much more outside of the ballroom too. There's like three main areas where you're going to see vendors. And I thought it was really cool to, to guide you guys through, give you an idea of all the things that you could possibly see in all the companies. We obviously needed to stop at the pilot booth, okay? Because it's definitely a standout 
in every show that it's at and it's probably going to be the pens that i never own but pens like the pilot namiki emperor and like the yukari pens and like for anyone who doesn't know these pens are incredibly expensive they're very much functional works of art but i would never actually write with them if i own them they can take up to six months to produce and there's even a waiting list for them they're gorgeous pens from beginning to end and there was this really cool thing where pilot brought in this gigantic vanishing point which you were allowed to hold and take pictures with so here's a few pictures of me posing with it pilot is officially my favorite pen company and the people working the stand just further solidified that in my in my mind 16, yeah. one day you get that in either black or the vermilion color if it gets dry we'll redip it Wow. Now the third thing that definitely changed during this show was my budget mastery, okay? Because the first show I was asked with my budget because I got one really big pen and before I kind of even saw the rest of the show and I didn't even take my own advice the way I should have but the budget mastery was the way to go here I set a really hard budget and like I said it's always going to be different um, for different people but I wanted to get the most that I could for my budget and making sure that I was getting like quality items, like things that really resonated with me during the show, things that I don't normally see or things that I know are gonna be hard for me to find outside of the show. Because a lot of the pens that I was interested in before, I can go even to Amazon now. Amazon is sell selling like a ton of fountain pens. So you don't have to exclusively go to like Goulet or like Gold Spot or like Atlas Stationers. You can now find even the most mass produced pens on Amazon. So I was trying to cut through that noise and making sure that I found really like high quality pens that really kind of vibed with me and I couldn't find it anywhere else and that fit within the budget, okay? Like I said, take it out cash. If you can take out your money cash and leave your cards at home, it's one of the best things that you can do for your wallet because it is so easy to convince yourself that $300, which is your entire budget for the trip, is not a lot when you just have your card right next to you where you can keep swiping. You never, you never really notice the damage of the pen show until the day after when you're going through all of your finances. So took it out cash, had it cash, knew what I was going to spend. And overall marked like it was a significant difference from my first pen show to my second. Now for one of the final highlights for me, it's very gross. Okay, these pens are jaw dropping pieces of work. Okay, you don't understand. All right, there's two lines specifically that caught my attention. The circuit board series that he had and then a steampunk pens. And his pens are really cool because they use recycled materials like watch parts, shipwreck coins, and even cigar labels. He teaches a class every year on how to make your own pens and just look at the clip, look at the circuit boards, look at the mechanism of, of the clip to get the, the nib out. It's it's really genuinely awesome work. He has a couple books out too, and I'm a little bit sad that I didn't end up getting one of his pens at the show, but I'm definitely adding it to my list of pens because these seem incredibly unique. Now for my third and final pickup of the show, I ended up getting a Narwhal pen, and yes, their name changed in August of 2022. It's Icelandic for Narwhal, but they had some copyright issues, or they couldn't copyright it, I believe. So they've changed their name to Navalur, but I don't even know if that's the right pronunciation. They're still going with the pronunciation of Narwhal. And this is my first one, and something about this purple looked absolutely gorgeous to me, and I was I need this, I need this and I needed to give it a try, and I'm trying to own at least one pen from every company, I was like, why not get started? And it's funny because um, I'm, I got it right after here, like after this video, had I not done it, they were sold out at the end of the show. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Enjoy the pen. All right, 6.05 p.m. We stayed the whole show on a Friday. And unfortunately, I have a lot of stuff to do. So I've actually never spent overnight at a pen show and I feel like I'm missing out. I have FOMO right now. 
But next time, next year, we will start staying at the Penn shows when we start traveling. Hopefully the San Francisco show is something we can do. Um, that's the goal, to start going to a lot more of these shows. But I had a lot of fun. This was the first time I've ever stayed from beginning to end of a show and it didn't feel like there was enough time for me to talk to everybody. I was having like 20, 30 minute conversations with people. I was getting to know everybody. Uh, it, it's a bummer to have to leave, but I do have a busy weekend, unfortunately. So I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you guys had fun watching it. I tried to, to show you guys my highlights, the fun stuff that I saw, the fun people that I met and the fun things that I got and I'll catch you guys in the next one. One of the biggest differences from the first pen show to my second pen show was the networking. It was a lot more meaningful this time around, like meaningful networking. I was talking to a lot more people and I just want to say thank you so much to the couple that came up to me at the beginning of the show and told me that you had watched my videos. It, it made my whole month, it made my whole year. I thought it was so cool to think that people are actually sitting down on their screens watching the kind of content that I'm putting on the internet. And meeting one of you guys, like in person, meeting you was huge for me. Like I journaled about it. I want you to know you're in my journal. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. But for this show, I definitely wanted to make a point to talk to more people, to talk to the vendors, to talk to other pen lovers, okay? I met up with people like April from Penguins Creative. Like I talked to her a little bit after the show when she was heading home, showed her my pens, even talked a little bit about my urban sketching. I met um, in person Brad, okay? I've uh, like, there's just, uh, um, sorry. I met like Brad from The Pen Addict. He came up to me, he said hello. That was the first time we ever met in person. So that was really cool. Overall, it just felt a lot better. And unfortunately, it, I wasn't able to stay this pen show. I haven't been able to stay any of the pen shows, but I'm going to make it a point that for the next pen shows that I'm going to, so hopefully the DC and the San Francisco show, I'm gonna be staying overnight because I know that the party is after the show. People like to hang out. People like to talk. People like to journal together. That's where it's at. And I feel like I'm missing a huge part of that pen experience, pen show experience, because I'm not spending the night. I just had a really busy weekend. But the networking and the talking was probably my favorite part. Even when I was leaving the sailor show, like the sailor stand when I was making the pen, um, Tom from the Ink Journal talk to me and he's like hey like i've seen your stuff on tiktok and i didn't know who he was at first because there's no face at first to the ink journal on tiktok and i follow them and i'm always liking his stuff i thought it was so cool and he's like hey i'm you know he pulled it out and he pulled his little sticker out and then he gave me his notebook and it was so cool him and his wife and his kids were there and they're just like we like your stuff it's really nice like take this journal and he gave me the the, the ink journal which is phenomenal by the way we'll talk a little bit about that in the hall but it was crazy it was so cool like i really love the aspect of meeting people and talking to people and it was just like we were interconnected through the interwebs but we had never met in person and it's crazy to think that that kind of connection can happen regardless the networking was one of the biggest differences from my first show to the second show so i really really highly recommend getting out of your comfort zone and talking to the vendors talking to people who are shopping talking to people who are sitting down don't be afraid don't be shy it's definitely a lot of fun and i hope that the next time that i go it's completely different from what i'm experiencing now all right so now we can get a little bit into my mini haul okay i didn't go crazy i didn't buy a bunch of stuff i kind of you know i had a little self-discipline here all right so don't judge me but let's start with this beautiful like string bag by gatlin leather so they were sponsoring the show this year and they were handing out these bags which i was lucky because i got two <laughs> since my girlfriend went i have two of these and i think they're such good material and then inside you got this beautiful galen leather um pen holder look how nice that is and i have one of my pens in here too but we'll talk about that in a second but look how nice that is it is such good quality i'm in love this is what i'm going to start carrying around on a daily basis because it is amazing so 
I didn't go crazy this pen show and I tried to manage all right what I got and how I got it and and tried to get stuff that you I wouldn't normally see like in stores or on websites so this is what I got and we'll start with the first one which you already saw the part of the vlog where I'm talking about it so much it was the sailor pen that I got okay look how awesome this is this is like a show exclusive sailor compass 1911 okay which mind you it does normally retail for about 30 dollars, and i ended up paying 75 but i i built this okay i built this myself i got all the pink pieces and like i said in the in the vlog there's somebody from japan that comes exclusively to build these pens because you have to be a like certified sailor um, technician i'm assuming somebody who specializes in assembling these pens and she does it so fast she was able to do it in like less than four minutes they were even timing her at the show they were gauging everything for the pilot program but i have no problem with sailor i love my sailor pens i said i have two sailor pro gear slims that i use on an almost daily basis this is my first compass but it is it is it's nice i really like the idea of build, being able to build your own pen and the quality is great it does feel a little light and you guys know that i'm not a big fan of really light feeling pens but like everything posted it feels really good it's a pocket pen right it feels amazing it looks great i know that i i doubt anybody had this specific combination and they had like muted um pastels i guess i would call them so i don't love the color options that they had because like i said it's a pilot program they didn't have too many options but i still really like this pen i think it's really cool the converter i'm probably just going to be putting crazy colors in this pen to show off how nice it looks and i'm happy with this purchase i think it, it was the highlight of my show honestly knowing that i made this and like i chose this and they made it in front of me it was it was awesome and i can't wait for them to do it at other pen shows and i can't wait for next year's color selection whatever they decide to do there the second pen that i got was this a Karis pen and i don't know if you guys are familiar with Karis, I wasn't before the show. I don't know how popular they are or not, but I really liked the aesthetic and the style and the people there were so cool. I ended up talking to them about cameras for like a good half hour. It was, it was really nice, but I ended up picking up this. Dun, 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 dun. I ended up picking up an Ink V2. I got the purple and then I got the brass grip which is really really nice so this normally retails for 90 dollars, which is also how much i paid for it at the show it's a fully machined pen with a threaded cap and it uses the german made bach nib to um get the ink but it's it's it feels so good it is heavy okay it is slim this is my first machined pen like fully metal aluminum machined pen this is my first one and i am obsessed and what i really really liked about this pen was the fact that you can take this part off okay and they have a conversion kit for their pens which allows you to turn it into a rollerball pen it was only 15 dollars. i didn't end up picking one up at the show but i really liked the idea of it and i'm hoping to pick up that conversion kit soon but i thought this would be such a good everyday carry now i haven't tried it okay i don't want to fill it up not yet um so i'm just going to be dipping it and we're going to be trying it like that but has just a converter inside nothing too crazy on the inside if it wants to Ooh, really nice but it is heavy it is durable i feel like i can chuck this pen everywhere so we're just going to give it a little writing test and i liked how it felt at the show when they gave me a tester so we're gonna write with that and see how that is and my third and final pen of the show my first normal pen okay ready ready mind you pink okay we're going for pink purples that's that's the vibe we're going for that's what we go for at these things okay this is what we do dun, 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 dun. yes it's inked okay i couldn't wait 
Okay, this was one of my favorite pens that I saw at the show, so I couldn't wait to get it. And this is the Narwhal Original Plus fountain pen in the Melkara, Mela, Melakara Purple, I believe it's called. But it is a really gorgeous kind of purple um, pen. It's got like orange inlays inside. It's gonna be a piston filler. I got it in the fine nib and absolutely love how this writes. So we're gonna be trying all these on how they write in one second. Since that one's already filled, that's not gonna be a problem. I got a bunch of stickers, but this was one of the coolest things that I got. I was doing my sailor pen, right? And it was, um, I would say towards the middle of the show, but I, I came at the end of the show uh, to kind of check in with the sailor people and see how the, how the test went, the pilot program. If a good amount of people did it, what people's reception were, kind of complaints. I just wanted to get an idea. And I ended up meeting Tom, from the ink journal and he has a really good following on tiktok and he was a really really cool guy uh he said he watched some of my stuff him and his wife watched some of my things on tiktok and they ended up handing me this the ink journal with a gold spot um gift card for ten dollars that i could use on their website this nice little bag that everything came in and we're going to be opening this because i'm excited to check this out too look at that all right, so let's start with the test. By the way, he was awesome. I highly recommend checking out his stuff. So I'll put I'll put his um, his socials right here, so you guys can go check him out. But let's try these pens out. So the first one, to give you guys an idea, I always get pens in fine to medium fine. I'm not really a medium or broad tip kind of person, so. Never extra fine too. I end up finding that those pens are just a little bit too scratchy. So I never use it, but let's see. Oh, this is like butter right now. And it was so consistent. It was so nice. Let me just, it felt so good when I was writing with it at the show. I was like, yep, this is it. This, it's so smooth. Might be my daily writer from now on that feels great it is smooth consistent in how much ink comes out it's not super wet it has a nice thread I really like this is my first Narwhal pen. Now, for the Karis Ink V2. Let's see how this one feels. This feels really good to a little bit of feedback, which I like, and it seems to be more of a broader fine nib, right? But I love how this feels. It's smooth, but it's not like writing on glass, essentially. I would compare the, the Narwhal to almost writing on glass. I know a lot of people don't love that feeling, but it's good to have a variety, all right, in your in your pen collection. And this one feels very smooth, but there's a tiny little bit of feedback, so I really like how it, how it writes. Definitely a little bit more wet too. This is nice, no skipping. I, I Something about being able to get a pen, okay, straight out of the box and not having to worry that I'm not gonna be able to use it, huge for me, all right? I have a little bit of PTSD from the, um, from the Visconti that I got, okay? I'm sorry, but this is, this is great. That writes so well. 
the ink journal. As you adventure into the wonderful world of fountain pens and inks, this notebook will be your trusty companion. Record your journey with each pen and ink combination in the following pages. Oh, this is so cool. Have the swatch, you have the pen that you're using, the kind of ink, the nib, and the date. Oh, this is so nice. I absolutely love this. This might be what gets me into how nice that is ink brand ink name color family cost origin and volume this is oh and you could even like rate it the drying time this is so deep this is fantastic because up like up until this point i've just been using my color ring which i got two years ago all right, at the at the other DC pen show, this is how I've been maintaining, um, like rankings too, like ratings. But stuff like drying time, uh, the the company, the pen I use, that wasn't stuff I was even thinking about recording when using, um, like swatching my inks. This is amazing. I love this. This is actually so so cool. All right. Well, that was my mini pen haul for the DC Fountain Pen Show 2023. Now let's go back. All right, so I know that it was a really long video, so thank you so much if you made it to the end. Okay, put a little fountain pen emoji in the comments so I know you made it to the end. I really appreciate you sitting down. I hope I could have kept you company while you were journaling or while you were eating or whatever it was. I had such a good time at the pen show. Absolutely my favorite. This is gonna be a highlight year for me and hopefully it only gets better from here on out. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and I hope I could show you guys some of my favorite parts and it was fun for everybody involved. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.